In this video, we extend Azure Files SMB access to on-premises clients. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and this is Raldos. In my last video, I went over setting up Azure File Share SMB access for Windows AD, now in public preview. This video picks up where the last one left off. In this video, we extend access to our on-premises network over VPN and secure the storage account. Before that, please take a second to subscribe, like, and share the videos if you find them helpful, and click the bell icon to get notifications of new content. As I said, this is the second part of the video on Azure File SMB Access, and it picks up where the last one left off. With an Azure File Share, we can access from Azure, but not from an on-premises network. I'll add the link to the video above. We have the share set up and we can mount it from a domain join computer in the Azure VNet. But when we try from our on-premises client in the domain with connectivity over the VNet, it fails. The reason for this is simple. Running an NS lookup on the storage account shows that it has a public IP address. The storage account is a cloud-based service and being that our Azure VNet is on the same cloud, access is allowed by default. However, clients on our on-premises domain are outside of the Azure ecosystem. Mounting the file share means that we're trying to access an SMB share over the internet. That is not good due to the security concerns with publicly accessible SMB shares. Even if we open the share for public access, which is not recommended, many ISPs block SMB traffic so access would be unreliable. What we need is a way to keep the SMB traffic on the VPN or express route connection so all traffic stays on the private network. Something like an endpoint for file shares that's private, some kind of private endpoint? Ah, a private endpoint. A private endpoint allows us to create a virtual NIC on our private VNet to access Azure resources such as the file share. I have a video that goes over private endpoints and service endpoints in greater detail. The link is above. This video is specific to setting up a private endpoint for the file share to keep SMB traffic on that private network. Let's talk about the storage firewall. The storage account is a public endpoint by default with a DNS name and public IP address. All access to the storage account is over the public network until we add a private endpoint. By adding a private endpoint, we approve traffic from any connected network by default, but the public endpoint is still available. We can block traffic to the public IP with a storage firewall. By enabling the firewall with no rules, we're essentially blocking all public traffic. The important thing to remember is that the storage firewall only applies to the public traffic, not the private endpoint. Restrictions can be added to the private endpoint as well with network security groups. The demo picks up right where the last video on configuring Windows AD SMB access left off. We're going to create a private endpoint and then configure DNS to resolve the storage account to the private IP. Then we'll enable the firewall and test it by mounting the share on a host outside of Azure over the VPN connection. Here we are picking up where we left off. We have our file share up here. We were able to connect to it from a server on the Azure VNet, but now we're going to extend that functionality so we can connect to it from a server that's on the other side of a VPN. This would be similar if ExpressRoute was in place. The first thing I'm going to do is go into the server. Here I'm logged in as test user 3. I'm going to run NSLOOKUP on CIR file test 01.file.core.windows.net. It's using my private DNS server, and you can see it's returning the uh, external IP address and the alias of CIR file test 01.file.core.windows.net. So now let's go back to that storage account and let's add a private endpoint. Here we are in the storage account. And if we scroll down under settings is private endpoint connections. And we're gonna create a private endpoint. We'll leave the subscription and the resource group as it is. We'll give it a name. We'll call it CIR file test PE and select the region. I'll keep it in the same region. Next, we'll go to resources. And I'm going to connect to an Azure resource in my directory. 
Here I can see all the resource types. I'll select Microsoft storage accounts. And then I'll select my storage account, which is CIR file test 01. And now it's asking for the sub resource and file. So do note if you're setting up private endpoints for blob, table, queue, web, or DFS, you would have to do this process for each one of those types. I'll go to next and configure. I'm going to select my VNet zero. That's my VNet that I'm connected to over VPN. And I'll set it to the default. And we do have to integrate with private DNS, so I'll leave that to yes. And leave the private DNS zone as privatelink.file.core.windows.net. Now I can go to review and create. And create. So this will create the private endpoint. We'll give it a minute to finish. And the deployment has succeeded. So let's go back to the storage account. Here in the resource group, you can see I now have a private endpoint and a NIC. It gives us some information. It tells us what VNet we're connected to, what network interface it's connected to. If I go to the network interface, we can see that the private IP address is 10.0.0.5. Next, I'll go back to the server. And I've got another window. I'm going to try to use that net use command. Let's see if we can mount it now. Okay, so that gave me the same error, network path not found. Okay, so we're not all the way done yet. Let's go back to this other window where I have NS lookup. I'm gonna run it again. So look at the difference now. Before we only had one alias, now we have two. We've got an alias of CIR file test onepriivatelinkfilecorewindowsnet Next, we need to make some changes to Windows DNS. This is done automatically if you're using Azure DNS, but we need to be on a Windows AD client for this to work, so you need to use Windows DNS. The client needs to resolve CIR file test onepriivatelinkfilecorewindowsnet to an internal IP address. One option would be to use host files. Just kidding, that would be horrible. Let's go back into the portal and take a look at my VNet settings. My VNet is set to use custom DNS servers. These are my Windows DNS servers for my domain. You could leave it as default and just manually update your Azure VMs with a custom DNS. At any rate, the client needs to use Windows DNS for this to work. And in my case, and probably a lot of others, Azure is pushing out custom DNS servers with the IP settings. So the client is using custom Windows DNS. We need to add a new domain in our Windows DNS and add a host record that points the fully qualified domain name to the storage account to that internal IP address. However, if we added the domain file.core.windows.net to the internal DNS, we would have to add every other Azure file host we use in this domain. That would be difficult to manage. Remember, after adding the private link, NSLOOKUP returned a new domain in the alias privatelink.file.core.windows.net. This is the domain we'll use for our internal DNS. We can add a host name and a private IP address to that domain to resolve internally. This way, non-private linked Azure file lookups will use file.core.windows.net to resolve externally. I give more details about DNS and private endpoints in my video mentioned earlier. Let's add the zone. Here I am on my DNS server, and I'm going to go into forward lookup zones and create a new zone. We'll go next. It's a primary zone. All of the other settings are going to be default. It's going to all DNS servers, and the zone name will be privatelink.file.core.windows.net. And we'll leave the rest default. Now that we have the zone in, let's add a new host record. The name of the storage account was CIR file test 01, and the IP address was 10.0.0.5. Now I'll add the host. Now let's go back to the client and run NSLOOKUP one more time. Uh, now it returns the address of 10.0.0.5. Still shows the alias of CIR file test onepriivatelinkfilecorewindowsnet but it's using the private link in the name. Before we mount the share, let's enable the firewall. Here I am at the storage account again. I'm going to go to Firewalls and Virtual Networks. Select Network and Save. By simply enabling the firewall, we block all traffic that isn't explicitly defined. 
Remember, the firewall only applies to access to the public IP. The private endpoint is attached to the VNet. Network security groups can be used to restrict access that way. Now let's go back to the client. We'll try to mount that again. It completed successfully. And there it is. So this client is accessing the storage account over the private endpoint. That has a 10.0.0.0 IP address. And this client is on my 192.168.200 network. So it's accessing that endpoint over the VPN tunnel. That's it for the video. I hope you found it helpful. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and click the bell icon to get updates of new content. Thanks for watching.